Hey everyone, this is Elephant for ADSR. And in this video, I wanna take a look at some powerful new max for live modulation devices that we can use to create some interesting movement in our sound design. So the two devices that I'm going to look at are called LFO and Shaper, and they're actually included with the core library in Live 10, but they are max for live devices. So you will need Ableton Live Suite or max for live to be able to use them. So we can find these in the core library in our pack section. And if we go into the core library, devices, audio effects, max audio effects, here we have the LFO and Shaper devices. So the first thing that you'll notice about these devices is that they actually look and feel just like regular Ableton devices. So the Max devices in Live 10 have been updated so that they don't actually feel like Max devices and they work and feel just like native Ableton devices, which is great. So first, let's just talk about what exactly a modulator is. So a modulator is anything that allows us to apply movement or modulation to a particular parameter. So for example, I have this basic chord pattern here. And if I grab my cutoff frequency and move it back and forth, I'm applying modulation to that parameter. Now modulators will allow us to do this at a lot higher speeds and with a lot more precision than we could do manually. You might be familiar with modulators like the LFOs that are built into certain synthesizers and effects. But the problem with these modulators is that they're usually hardwired to control a particular parameter or a limited range of parameters. Whereas these max for live modulators we can actually apply them to almost any parameter within the live interface. So let's take a look at how they work. In each of the devices, you'll see we have this map button in the top left. And if I click on that, I can map this modulator to any parameter within the live interface. Now, I know I could modulate this cutoff frequency using the LFO and the synthesizer, but just to demonstrate this, I'm gonna map this LFO to the cutoff frequency. And immediately you can see that that control starts to be modulated. And one of the things that I like about these Max for Live modulators is that you can actually see the modulation being applied to the control. So we can adjust some of the parameters of this LFO. For example, we can adjust the rate. And we can sync this to the tempo of our track. We can adjust how much modulation is being applied. And we can affect the minimum and maximum range that our modulator will move within. Then we can also set certain wave shapes for our modulation. So at the moment I have just a basic sine wave, but I can change this to have different shapes. And if I want to remove the modulator from a particular parameter, I can just click this little X button that appears next to where the map button was. The Shaper device is very similar to the LFO and you'll see we have a lot of similar controls, for example, our rate and depth. But the key difference is that instead of using a predefined list of wave shapes, we can actually create our own custom wave shapes to map to the parameters using this little editor over here. So again, I'll map this to the cutoff frequency. We have a couple of preset wave shapes that we can use. And we can draw in our own wave shapes. We can even curve these if we hold down the Alt key.
So let's take a look at some practical examples of how we can use these modulators in our sound design. One of the things that I love about these modulators is because I can map them to anything, I can modulate effect parameters that I might not otherwise be able to modulate. So for example, I've got this particular effect I like to set up using the grain delay. And I'll set the pitch of the delays to be an octave above. So I get this interesting pitched grain effect. But now I can map my LFO to the dry wet parameter. And I've got some interesting effect modulations happening. So let's hop over to the next track where I have a simple bass line that just follows my chord pattern. But now I want to add some modulation to the cutoff frequency on this bass line and I want to lock it in with the modulation that's happening on my chords. So with these modulation devices, I can actually map a single modulator to multiple different parameters. If I click on this button over here, I have up to eight destinations that I can map the modulator to. So if I click on map, I can even map this onto a completely different track. So if I go over to my bass, I can map this to the filter cutoff of my bass. And I have separate range controls for each parameter as well. So now the modulation between my bass and my chords is locked in sync. And if I make any adjustments to this shaper device, it's gonna affect both of those parameters. I can set a slightly finer grid in my shaper to get a bit more resolution. And you can hear that my modulations stay perfectly locked in sync. One of the other things I like to use these modulators for is to create interesting rhythmic patterns out of things that might not otherwise be rhythmical. So over here, I have just a basic noise sample. And I've got this shaper set up with a custom wave shape. And I'll map this to the mixer volume of this track. And so this turns the noise into an interesting shaker hi-hat pattern. For the final example, I have a basic melody synth set up using this instrument rack. And within the instrument rack, I can use these tone controls to affect the brightness of my sound. So what I like to do is use the LFO to add subtle variations to the tone of my sounds over time. So if I map this LFO to the tone control, maybe turn down the maximum amount, and I'll set this to quite a slow rate. So you'll hear that the sound of my synth is gonna just evolve over time. And I might add in a second LFO and map this to the second tone control Again, we'll restrict the range a bit. And also set it to a slow rate, but one that's gonna be slightly different to what we've already got set up, so that these two LFOs are gonna move slightly out of phase and create these interesting uh, non-repetitive patterns. So you can hear we've gone from some very static patterns. If I remove all of this modulation, we have a very static pattern. But as soon as I bring back these modulators, we immediately have some movement within our sound. So these are just a handful of some of the things that you can do with these modulators. 
they're incredibly powerful tools for sound design. So hopefully this has given you some ideas of how you can use these modulators in your own sound design. I'd be really interested to hear what different uses you can come up with. So please post them in the comments below. Thanks for watching.